Hello everyone. Welcome back to Thursday Night's Adventure Star Trek Night's Adv ah, Star Trek Adventures Night with the crew of the USS Nighthawk. Uh, today uh, we are going to t have our typical captain's log briefing in the form of a conference room briefing. So, Captain, you've received orders from Star Trek Intelligence, and what are they? Well, nice to see everybody in your bright and shining faces here again today. Even though I wasn't able to assist you last time, I have read all the after-action reports, and I'm very pleased with the outcome of last week of our, your most recent mission. And any kid. <laughs> yes, God. nod, nod. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, uh, we still have a job to do. And now I'm back, and uh, let's make sure we get to uh, do it the best way we know how. The only way we know how. The Starfleet Intelligence way. In any case, I have gotten new mission parameters from Mr. Chalmers here. <sighs> After your incursion with the mirror universe and the intel that you've gathered here, we definitely want more information with what's going on with the Tholians. But considering that they're not necessarily too eager to tell us, that means we're going to have to do a bit more of the legwork ourselves. Starfleet Intelligence has a favorable operative embedded. And we've been ordered... The Nighthawk specifically has been ordered to apprehend the Tholian criminal Falks. Barring that, we try to obtain or steal or acquire the information forever Falks may keep it. If you're not in, if you're not already if you're not already introduced to this inter individual, he is a small boss within the Orion Syndicate. Starfleet Intelligence believes that he runs slaver connections and also has black market contacts inside Tholian space. This man does have his business run out of a penthouse suite in a hotel called Kinavaran, and it's pretty close to Iran. So we are to meet up with our Starfleet Intelligence contact, which we'll find on the surface of the planet, and we'll pro most likely find him in the lounge serving drinks. Considering the nature of this mission, though, it's it's quite clear that everybody has to go undercover. We are not going in as Starfleet personnel. There is nothing that we could do during this mission that will actually tie us back to Starfleet or the Federation at large. Any questions? No, sir. Sir. I personally am more interested and other things that we may acquire. Starfleet Intelligence is most definitely interested in the Tholians, and so am I. But I, the more I read about this fox, the more unanswered questions this man gives gives us. And additionally, since everything else that's been going on in the Alpha Quadrant so far, we haven't necessarily had enough time to have a closer eye on the Orion Syndicate other than our previous assets that were in place. So if we could turn this into an additional fact-finding mission as well, I'd be more most grateful. But as always, mission parameters are paramount. We're to obtain Fox and or his information and see if there's anything else that we can claim out of that. Anything else? Come Do secondary. you have any information on particular on this Fox? I do not. Other than... Species or <laughs> what he well, looks like. He is, besides the fact that he is Tholian and he's a small crime boss, not much is known. There are a few small events that have taken place in the past that Starfleet Intelligence has tied him to or believed that he has been associated with. But nonetheless, we don't really have much about him. There's so much that we still don't know, even with our most recent incursion. And so this is a intel gathering mission. They say it shouldn't be too hard to find a Tholian in an Orion bar, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, it yeah. certainly, certainly make our job easier. In any case, Commander Helsing, I'd like tactical briefings. I'd like uh, tactical arrangements to be uh, just to be run immediately. Once we uh, arrive at Kinavaran, 
I'd like security security scans and security details of the planet done. Uh, I'd also want estimate. I wanted the estimated difficulty of if we have to run into additional Orion Syndicate personnel. I want to make sure that we are prepared. Additionally, I want to make sure that we that the rest of the away team has decent cover. Uh, decent cover identities planned. <laughs> Commander Bashir, you and Lieutenant Vade will continue going over the information that you acquired from the Mary Universe. If there's anything else that we could find that could connect it to Falks while we're on the course of this mission, I want to make sure that we are the first to know so the away team doesn't get surprised about anything else. Other than that, you guys have your orders. If I may, Captain. Dismissed. Uh, Specialist Calix interjects briefly. Uh, uh, Kinarvan is a city on Orion, sir. Uh, n- most notably, on uh, the opposite side of their planetary govern, on their opposite side of their quote-unquote capital city, heavily entrenched within the syndicate's control, and the entire. Th- the entire so- southern continent that res- that it resides on is completely transported, transporter shielded. Uh, if required, sir, I could potentially bring up a contact uh, to help uh, shuttle us in under less than official gu- guise, if necessary. Specialist, when you say transporter shielded, do you mean... Advanced transporter shielded. I would not have just regular our upgrade. I'm not entirely certain our transporter upgrades have been tested against their shielding. However, given that Orion's anti-piracy technologies or pro-piracy technology seems to keep pace or outpace Federation technology, it is a risk to rely on uh, such a method. Roger, it's a paranoid, paranoid arms race. Do we have, uh, does your contact have a landing craft that would fit the cover identities? Uh, it would be a freighter captain uh, who Perfect. has run missions with Starfleet Intelligence before. And he happens to op. Uh, correction, she happens to operate in between Orion and various local planets. Excellent. Make contact with your uh, connection. I shall. I shall send out the. I shall send out the word. Roger. We can always have the specter on ready one. Ready to come in for any type of hot evacuation if need be, to guide in a shuttle to bring us out. Very well, sir. You just need to find a pilot, because right now we've only been using Mr. Jefferson and uh, Ms. Jackson. Get them spun up. I don't know if we got anybody else rated on the on the spec. Well, Ms. Jackson can help us if we need to get pulled out. That's not a problem. Or we just need to get out of the transporter. Uh, Barrier in a hurry. I do know Ensign Meld is a uh, trained fry controller, but I'm not necessarily certain of how much time he's actually rated for the Spectre. In any case, though, I rather not tr- start another additional third party war with the Orion Syndicate. Ah, <laughs> uh, sir. In any case, Specialist Calix, go ahead and make contact with your contact. And everybody else, you know what job you have to do. Go ahead and do it. All right. Okay, so, um, preparate. So, who wants to do the gear up montage scenes? Anyone in particular? Doesn't matter. Of course. Of course. How can you say no? Come on. All right. Who wants to. Anybody have scenes they'd like to do? doesn't well i was gonna say me and avid or yeah avid will uh 
go through a you know sciencey stuff a montage for uh, um, going through the information we changed and the uh, technology I contained from the um, mirror universe. Oh yes, but I don't think it necessarily needs to be a scene if you just want to no. make a couple rolls. Oh no, I I assumed all that stuff happened between scenes or between episodes. Okay. It's been about a week if I remember correctly since you returned. Okay. Uh, yeah, close enough. A week. Okay, so then we are going to cut mm. to space. Roughly, a, oh, I haven't updated this profile in a while. Uh, Tholians are not present. Well, even if I'm not going down to the planet's surface, I still want to get in character. So I'm going to go <laughs> put on a uh, leather jacket and spike my hair up and put a knife in my boot. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I I'm in the same way. I want the brown leather and straps, <laughs> and I was even thinking, you know, I'm gonna like somehow synthesize a cut off antenna. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can cut it off for you. Thanks. No, I really don't want it cut off because they grow like, back, doesn't it? They do grow back, yes, but I think I would seriously be at a negative for any sort of dexterity for the next month. <laughs> I'd imagine being an enduring barber. Uh, so, uh, a couple days later, at the prearranged coordinates well outside Orion's space, uh, the USS Nighthawk waits and has been waiting for roughly an hour. When all of a sudden, out of warp, appears a large freighter. It pulls up alongside and opens hailing frequencies. <coughs> That's a big freighter. <laughs> on screen. Uh, on screen is a Temerian. Vassalok at Nighthawk. It's... I think you cut out there, uh, Bashir. Greetings. Tamarian. Uh, what, what, what did he say? Tamarian. Uh, at... oh, Tamarian. Uh. Asinar. Hands open and the da and extending the gangplank. Bashir. Welcome. And thanks. And with that, the Temerian uh, lowers the freighter's shields and cuts communication. Thank God, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what, your Temerian is not up to stack? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> <laughs> Universal translator broken, nothing, <laughs> nothing working. You're supposed to mention something about Tamagra. <laughs> I was going to say, all I kept thinking is then the walls fell. And <laughs> uh, yeah. If all fell, just reference pop culture. That's what people do, apparently. Apparently. Okay. okay. So, who <laughs> is. And the Scooby Snacks, welcome. <laughs> Uh, I just realized they speak in memes. They do, <laughs> yes. Now see, I could have a very good long conversation with them then. Your meme game is on point. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, so okay. Uh, who is beaming over and describe your temporary appearance, please? Oh, um, I will also allow, because you're going into hostile territory, that you can get up to two free uh, threat for any equipment that you decide to take. So... I will not take additional threat if you decide to say bring along a, you know, non-Federation standard disruptor rifle, for example. So as everyone is quickly jumping over to the uh, gear section in the ah! uh, books. Okay, that there might be truth to that. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh -huh. who's going over? All right. Um, I will have a uh, 
patch on. I'm not going to cut off the antenna. I'm sorry. I can't do it. <laughs> you have too much fun with that. Um, so I am going to go with the patch on and uh, have the uh, classic uh, maquis looking brown jacket and straps. Um, I will take a Klingon disruptor and a Klingon um, one of the pointy cool like pop open knives. I can't think what they're actually called. <laughs> Switchblade? No, the you know the the Klingon ceremonial blade that you push oh. the slides come out. <laughs> the best thing I can think of. Duck 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 tog? Yeah, Dick Tog. I actually know what. I'm changing my mind before we go. I'll take the two Andorian blades. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll have the ice blades. There you go. <laughs> uh, that makes I some sense. I'm not, yeah, yeah. And the Klingon just wrote. <clears throat> just because okay. I really want to shoot somebody at some point and do the... <sighs> I mean, it's entirely possible that if there's a, going to be a session where, you know, Lethal force is authorized. It might be this one. Anyways, uh, Mr. Helsing, are you going or is somebody else coming along? Oh, he's going. Of he's course. Going. <laughs> um, going over um, blue pants, yellow stripe down the outside of each leg, um, kind of a white shirt with a black vest, um, brown uh, leather trench coat, uh, disruptor slung low on the right hip, um, in a kukri strapped at the small of the back for a blade. Hmm. Yes, I'm hand solo. Okay. Um, I am going to assume that Mr. Thishran is coming along to handle any engineering related issues. Uh, Lieutenant. Well, and he is actually proficient with those blades. So yes, he I is. am not. <laughs> is he missing an antenna? <laughs> Knowing his player, he probably is he might just do that, but we'll follow up when his player shows up. Um, Vaid, are you going, or are you bringing someone else? Probably bringing someone else. Okay. Who would you like to bring along? Good question. Do we need a science officer on this one? Wouldn't mind. Probably might have to do some hacking or something. Yeah. Oh, I thought Vaid was doing the thing with Bashir. Uh, there, there... Oh, no, Bashir's lead that. That was that oh, was they, we between already did games. It? No. Yeah, we already did that <laughs> off game. Okay, then yeah, yeah she, she's definitely. Yeah, can, I was gonna say, come on with us. Don't make me make it in order. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> nah, she's totally going. Okay, and what does your uh, undercover appearance look like? Her undercover appearance. Uh, she keeps the earring on, but she will tie her hair up not not quite in a bun, but she'll tie it, tie it back in a tight ponytail, and um, put some makeup on and give her give herself a scar, kind of like someone scratched her face. <laughs> Cursing Cardassians. Yes. <laughs> uh, Try to age up a little bit. Uh-huh. And. Uh... Captain Singral, since you're elected to stay on the Nighthawk, who do you wish to bring along? I'll go ahead and uh, take on Deja Williams, actually, okay. as a uh, just in case we needed some additional medical personnel and we actually get into like a firefight or something. Oh. That would probably be helpful to not die. Very well. And what does Perhaps Deja... quickly. That's a smart idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Deja, um, before you leave sick bay, uh, the doc- Dr. Coox gives you a series of hyposprays, ten of them to be precise, and they are to suppress the uh, bio- the, bio- uh, the biological response to Orion hormones. Each dose is good for 12 hours. Thank you, but I mean, Coox, let's be honest here. There's no way that you're going to go send me into the Orion Syndicate and not give me some... Uh, Hypo spray is about faking death. I mean, I've always wanted to do that in all the hollow novels I've played. I'm pretty certain you have the medical training necessary to rec- to figure that out on hand if necessary. And he gives his knowing smile. <laughs> Man, I really hope that there was like some Starfleet intelligence pill or something. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh no, those are for permanent death only. 
<laughs> the, <laughs> due to a mislabeling incident, the uh, fake ones were discontinued. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. <laughs> yeah. Man, real man, reality sucks. Yeah. It, Not like a holodeck at all. Welcome to life, Lieutenant. Okay. You all beam aboard uh, the cavernous freighter known as Zarmila's uh, Eagerness. <clears throat> you are met by the captain, who is who's t uh, Captain Vasilok. Uh, she ba she bows and opens her hands wide. J Jill Thune, smugglers in the hold. Arms wide open, welcoming, and I'll put my fingers together and, like, do a slight bow. Uh, she laughs. Tenerix, fourth year birthday party. <laughs> and she gestures into the uh, cavernous hold of the uh, smugglers of the uh, not the smuggler it's a legitimate freighter operation most of it is indeed open space stacked high with several boxes container units held securely in place with uh, secure uh, cabling force fields everything is neatly labeled uh, she passes a data pad to uh, you commander Bashir mm -hmm. it has maps of the it has a schematic of the ship included is or with directions into the sma the hold where which is allegedly scan proof ah hobbit hole <laughs> and i kind of point and circle to the map <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah she nods she nods, not understanding the reference, but close enough. Yeah. Uh, there are three other Temerians working uh, in Shi, working along the... Ah, sorry, let me get my speech back in order. There are three other Temerians, uh, two males, one female, operating, uh, operating in the cargo bay. They don't pay you much heed as you str wander past. And are you going to go straight into the Hobbit hole, as we're now calling it, <laughs> or are you? <laughs> how how long of a trip do we have? Uh, it's going to be estimated to be one day. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I don't think we need to gear up and hide right this very moment. Um, uh, I look at her. It's like I point to all of us and like Dozer, strong work. Buildings, cargo, help. She nods. Hmm. Anaris, building foundations. She, uh, she shouts, Jackris. Undergraduates seek a or seek to learn. And one of the the big burly male, who is wearing very very uh, who is wearing a tank top that is probably one size too small, and a heavy duty work pants, beckons you over and points at a massive amounts of crates that appear to have just either fallen out or have been loaded so bloody quickly that they have just decided not to follow proper Federation shipping guidelines. With things settled, Vasilok turns around and struts back to her bridge. Captain, you are notified that these uh, Zarmiel's eagerness is jumping to warp and will arrive in Orion space in about one hour, or one day, sorry.
Um, do I happen to know what I we need to pay her? <laughs> do I have like a briefcase of like gold price platinum or something like that? Um, well, that probably would have been something for the GM to think about before doing this. Uh, let's just say that just she's on. Just curious. Okay. Let's just say that <laughs> she's on tenure. Okay. She got an Amazon gift card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Starbucks, man. Starbucks. Uh, she's a smuggler. <laughs> Um, I will, uh, as a side note, since we're doing that, um, I am going to procure some money before we go, <laughs> so we have that covered, too. <laughs> mm, yeah, a, pla- a good idea. Okay. Uh, so, tell you what, if you're going to try to um, get some money, um, either roll me Daring plus... Con, <laughs> just because it's con. No, daring plus con or presence plus command. Um. So daring plus con is where you enter gambling. You know, try to fleece the crew for a bit of local credits. Uh, or dare or uh, control con. Yeah, or presence command for diplomacy to negotiate. Um, a loan. Presence command. Okay. Uh, difficulty I've... of two. I don't think I have any good gambling focuses. No, apparently, I don't have any diplomacy focuses either. Diplomacy either. <laughs> your attempts to muddle your way through the Temerian's use of. Um, allusions or lit- literary allusions for money doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, you're Fair pretty. Sure, yep. You're pretty sure you may have insulted one of their leading philosophers along the way. Mm. Oh, and it looks like the Shran might be joining us. Yep, I'm here. Hey, welcome to the Shran. Uh, so you're being uh, you're currently in a cargo hold of a merchant ship being smuggled onto a world known for its uh, lustrous green alien chicks and its criminal enterprises in an attempt to extract or forcibly extract a crime boss. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you are not going in this official Starfleet and if you want to take non-Starfleet gear you have a uh, you can t- bring along a couple free things just because you're going in behind enemy lines so feel free to Can look we through... we have... yeah. I'm sorry go ahead. so feel free to look through the uh, gear section of the various books and let me know what you want if anything at all <laughs> uh, Captain what are your orders for the USS Nighthawk so we'll shadow uh, Zalmir Eagerness under black alert for quite some time while we keep our distance. Okay. And at this end, once we actually arrive at Orion, um, as long as we get close enough uh, to not, you know, trick any planetary sensors or random Orion syndicate sweeps and things like that, and we've actually established a position when the we'll have the away team contact us, so we can maintain we can maintain comms at certain certain times of the day. Understandable. Okay. Copy that. And going in. So the planet Orion, a slar- a uh, from the s- exterior of space, it appears to be a typical Class M planet, heavily colonized, uh, verdant blue or verdant blue oceans, uh, lush forested areas, mountainous terrain. A larger ice cap on the northern pole than the southern. You know, pretty standard. If it wasn't for being, it's ah, if it wasn't for its reputation of being the Federation's local hive of scum and villainy, it might do pretty well on the tourist market. At least, you know, those tourists who are not looking for sex, drugs, and illicit music. After a full day's worth of hard labor, um, 
Commander Bashir, you are instructed in no uncertain terms that it is time to get below deck. Into the tiger's cage. That bitch Carol Baskin. <laughs> wasn't the wood chipper. Uh, 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 uh. Tiger King is universal, so. Absolutely. At this point, it's the meme has transcended time and space. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, you said you go ahead and with the memes. I'm going with the memes. <laughs> uh, you, the, uh, at the systems, at the edge of the system, uh, it becomes very clear that the uh, Zarmil's eagerness has attracted, uh, I keep pausing, sorry, has attracted the, uh, has attracted the interest of nearby border craft. They swoop in, and begin scanning. After a short period of time, they send off the OK, OK signal, and the Zarmil's eagerness continues to fly into the uh, system. It's quite a congested system. Uh, Orion has very little in the ways of marked travel lanes or enforcement craft that are, you know, above bribery, and so it's very much fly at your own risk style. There are a couple times down in the hold where the crew, or where the infiltration team has to hold on to whatever they can find to avoid being you know, turned upside down inside out or thrown halfway across the hold into other officers in what would probably be compromising positions if this was an anime. These There is a lar ah, the ship enters the upper atmosphere as it begins to make planet fall. There's very uh, thanks to the shielding, especially around the area that you are all in, you're not you don't even notice more than a single degree rise in temperature. I should say degree Celsius, not Fahrenheit, because I am a Canadian GM. So that would be about two and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Eventually there is a loud lurch and the sound of industrial equipment driving on and off of the ship. Uh, there's a three, there are three bangs on the door indicating that it is safe for you to emerge. All right, we'll climb out and check the surroundings. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the city of Kirnarvan, a bustling metropolis from, again, from the outside. Uh, several lar several skyscrapers uh, pierce the skyline and what would be a glorious day you are of course not in this neighborhood at the moment you're in the shipping or you're in the cargo loading bays which is in a less reputable area of the town Orion's bickering at one one another each of them are attempting to extort others and you are already hearing a loud co loud commotion between the or two Orions and the ship's captain. It seems that they are arguing about docking fees, permits, basically anything they could do to wring another couple bar strips of latinum out of this guy. So what kind of, um, I mean, is it, obviously, I'm assuming it's mostly uh, Orions. Um, what other kinds of races and such are? So it is, uh, right now within the shipping yards, primarily, it is a Orion controlled. Almost anyone wearing a uniform is Orion. Uh, but there are traders from all over the Federation and beyond. You see several Ferengi. Uh, you see a couple Andorians, several humans of various degrees of reputable dress, uh, a Vulcan trader ship for whatever reason, and some Breen. Ooh. Stay away from them. Uh... 
So, all right. We going to head over um, and uh, kind of salute to the uh, captain and all right, uh, head off. Obviously, we're in a dock port and what's the first thing we should do is go to a bar. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just what you do. Of course. <laughs> Now, which bar are you going to? Are you just going to a random bar, or are you going to the hotel bar that your contact may be in? I'm thinking that we should probably um, make our way. I'm assuming since this is a docking port, there's probably like a um, oh, like a market area. Um, somewhat Basically, I kind of want to just see what how things are run and go in so we're not all newbies into what we're doing. So, yes, I'd like a small, like, dive bar and yeah. uh, near a market area off okay. of the docks just to see what's going on and get a feel before we head out to actually the city where we're supposed to go. Okay. I don't have a good dive bar set, but we'll use the hotel bar and pretend it's about five, maybe six degrees more dingy. Nice. Yeah, pretty much. Ew. Mm -hmm. so, the bar... Ooh. <laughs> maybe I should have just went here. Sorry. <laughs> the bar reeks of alcohol. Um, some sort of off tempo minor key jazz is playing in the background uh, this definitely appears to cater more to the working crowd than to the tourists uh, several orions and others of different skin tones and species are fairly quiet there most of them keep to themselves uh, the bartender a beefy orion male not wearing a heck of a lot immediately ca immediately attempts to catch the eyes of Miss Williams or Miss Vaid. Uh, he raises his eyebrows and speaks in an extremely deep voice. Well, hey, a gorgeous, would you or your men prefer a drink? I nudge Vaid. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to look over at me. Why, yes. What do do I know? What it was like? What are your? What do you consider to be the best? He scoffs. What I consider to be the best is not. Is not something that we serve here. He pulls out an He pulls out a, a replicator nozzle, and squirts some thick greenish liquid into it. This is the preferred drink around here. That'll be five quiplas, please. All right. Do I have that money on me? <laughs> uh, no, because the captain did not do very well in negotiating for local currency. Oh, yep. commander, but yep. Nope, oh, sucked. <laughs> yeah, commander, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe by the end of the season. Gotta look around. <laughs> he uh, stares, or he looks at uh, at uh, you and uh, Miss Williams. If there's, if that's not, or if you do not wish to pay currency, other options could be arranged. And he points to a, a force field, uh, very similar to one of these doesn't look like it's been hosed down in a few weeks. Mm. I'm going to nudge um, Helsing, and we're going to find some sort of gambling table. <laughs> Did you have any currency which to gamble with? Nope. You have to have some money to make money. Well... <laughs> Well, I'm still not. I was like, <laughs> we need to figure something out. So, 
<laughs> all else fails, oh, you God. still have your communicators. I was say, we have our stuff on us, so... No. That is good. Cool. Oh, <laughs> Thievery? What, what role would that, like, role would that there's, be? There's also busking. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Thief, uh, thievery would probably fall under daring plus... Probably daring plus security, I would think. And the cover I'd be of a, infiltration? I would say opposed role, yeah, yeah, with daring security. I'd say, yeah, an opposed role, daring security, that would do the trick. Uh, versus their presence plus security, I would think. Yeah, I think yep. that sounds perfect. Okay. Uh, what what sort of mark are you looking to take from? <coughs> Drunk. Drunk. Somebody who's drunk enough not to, you know, do the old bump and frisk and snatch and grab. Well, you're in luck. There are several of those that fit this description here. Does anybody have any currency lying out on a table? Uh, yes. They look that right. does appear to be how people attract the more attractive serving wenches. Right. Um, XO, I apologize for this, but walk this way with me and make sure he's on the inside of me between me and the table. Okay, I will. And I'll follow him what he's doing. Then I push him into the table, into those people saying, I told you once, I'm not going to do that. Whoosh! And push him into the table, knocking it over. Okay. I'll play along and I'll get nasty with them. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll me dare. How oh, dare you? Well, the idea is to make sure you go into the table to knock it over and we pick up whatever change we can. Yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so uh, if uh, Commander Helson could please roll daring security, and you can be a Bashir can assist with presence plus security. Um, convert ops bartering distraction causing those would be good scenes so that's sleight of hand sleight of hand yeah that was a good one <laughs> i wish i had that <laughs> so that is uh three successes from helsing so far yeah, dude Oof. and a critical failure from me so that is a grand total of two successes from you mr helsing and you apparently you do it so well that the table or that how you knock the table off or knock the table over, causes it to lurch upwards, knocking over one p or cracking the jaw of one of the poor Orion dock workers who just is now holding a bloody jaw because and it's difficult. Of any of the money that I picked up, I'll give them a couple of the coins and for an apology. Yeah. He spits out a tooth and green blood follows, or leaving a trail of green blood he looks at you just trying his best not to pass out drunk then he takes the couple uh, quidlets that you have given him puts it in his pocket says that'll teach you and then immediately slumps over unconscious and you have gained let's see One million quid capets. Uh, you have gained 48 okay. quidlets. Eight. How many quidlets are quidling? Five. Okay. Uh, you know, quidlets, quidlins are a state, are the state currency that is only accept, that is only accepted within Orion space because, well, they're, you know, that's how they roll, yo. Go. <laughs> uh, All right, and start walking back to where we were. And how many? So 48? And what were the drinks for the... Uh, th he said five, so one quidlet each. All right, so I'll hand that over to them. He... Leaves us 40? Uh, 42. 40. Uh, nope, 43, sorry. GM can math. The bartender gives you a look as if he saw what you're doing, but he doesn't really care. Thank you. 
Not a problem. Damn, it gets contagious. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> Bay, it's gonna go over by Hell's thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, those booths do not look too sanitary. No offense. Oh, so you're going to let me do that? <laughs> she just shrugs. Whatever. <laughs> The Sean asks if we if we need more money because if so he can start to uh, try to do some bus try to draw a crowd. Oh, there's the tank. You can dance. Yeah, there is. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Thashran, as you're busy, let's just say appreciating Orion culture, uh, one of the uh, serving girls wanders up, uh, tall, lithe, busty, and curvy in all the right places, completely green from hair to toe. Uh, she wanders up with you and seductively lays a, a runs a hand around your antenna and just delicate enough to raise feelings that are really not supposed to be felt during uh, on duty assignments and she whispers into your ear blue is my favorite color what a coincidence it's <laughs> she, smir she smiles seductively. Please tell me you've all taken the pheromone doses. Because if you haven't, I'm going to need rolls. Oh, yes. Okay. You threat to say we freaking did. Because that did not come up after she gave it to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> I took half of mine. I, I, take a, I take a daily dose, just a little bit, to help build up uh, an immunity. Ah, yes. You take a daily dose. That's... Because that's how they work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I saw it in a movie one time, and it worked there. <laughs> her attempts at uh, flirting or convincing Thashran to give her more... Give her money isn't hitting all that well, so she's immediately just going to make that... <sighs> motion and stomp away and attempt to seduce other people who are more drunk and more willing to give up their money. Also people who actually have money considering I don't have any to give away, so... Yeah, yeah. She can't blame a girl for trying, right? <laughs> yeah. For some man, thinks it's from her. <laughs> uh... She looked really nice. What if you just let go of your soulmate? You're not even going to attempt to fight for her? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? I say joking place to the commander, obviously. Everyone's audio working because mine seems to be cutting out every now and then. I think I'm going to jump servers really quickly here. Oh, yeah, I'm in the yellow. Seatbelt fastened. Seatbelt fastened. Jumping channels. I never... At least we have seatbelts. Lean would... to the left. Lean to the right. Lean to the left. <laughs> okay. Server settings. Let's jump. Let's jump out east to New York City. Okay, hopefully this will work better. New York City! <laughs> and I can already hear you better. Cool. So you guys now have a little bit of currency. And you guys now have an idea more or less how Orion, at least the slums of Orion culture. We got our dose. Is this uh, alcohol or is it actually t synthol? Oh, it's legit alcohol. They don't do I this. Figured. They don't go half measures here. <laughs> it's a very thick, syrupy uh, kind of drink. It is extremely sour, but it leaves a bit of a sweet aftertaste. Y'all so, yeah, we'll 
<laughs> We're all taking sips off of her during character. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not touching a single glass in this book in this joint. <laughs> Medic, if, the, if our medic doesn't says it's too unhygienic, it's too unhygienic. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best. Alcohol could possibly kill anything in the glass. It's what's on the outside of the glass, so I'd be worried about. Eh. So we sit around for a little while and kind of survey the area. Is there anything... Do we actually, at any point, see, like, Tholians here? Uh, no. A Tholian would be very easy to pick out of a crowd. Figured to smash. Yeah. But... but no, there's definitely no... Uh, there's no Tholians here. All Class M species here. Mostly uh, dock workers or industrial workers from the uh, various Orion employers, employees-ish. And a few tourists, people coming and going from the uh, freighter yards. You definitely see a bunch of Ferengi attempting to gamble over what appears to be some sort of snail race. There's a big amount of latinum being thrown around at it. The one with the black shell eventually wins and is immediately eaten by um, someone. To its... Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Eh, that's how Ferengi are. It's eaten, but, you know, compensated with latinum, etc. Uh, the dancers continue to move in what appear to be highly or poorly choreographed routines that repeat every five minutes. And despite their... Or you can tell that their smiles are completely artificial. Some of their body parts are probably too. <laughs> At least she went with the Orions and not the uh, three-breasted cat lady from Five. Yeah. No, that that movie does not exist. There are some things that are not canon. That whole sequence is one of them. Okay, so we kind of mingle around and see what's going on, and... Uh, if it gets closer to the uh, more night on planet night, mm -hmm. um, I said we head up towards the uh, city district um, and uh, try to head towards the meeting place for this. All right. Anybody objecting to such a thing? No. Anybody got anything else to do while we're here? Any Orion fantasies anyone wants to take care of? Preferably not on anything below PG-13. <laughs> I know. Anyone want to have a conver? Anyone want to have a conversation with the Frankie just to make the GM do the voice? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if I was actually confident in my skills, I would love to play Tango, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As evening settles in, uh, you make your way along the back alley of the of Orion's of Orion's streets. They are bustling with people. Uh, it seems that even at this late at night, uh, the the city just does not sleep. Uh, more of the the more drab apparel has made way for more colorful and enticing outfits on both male and female alike and sir and it's not f ah and even with ah blah, talking again and it even within five minutes after leaving the bar each one of you has at least had had to fend off at least one or two potential suitors sometimes male sometimes female sometimes indeterminate sometimes both Following the map that has been provided to you from the intelligence briefing, you're heading down several alleyways, several open f streets. Uh, Mr. Helsing, uh, could you please roll me insight plus security, please? 
difficulty. I was of... just gonna see if we could do a search mm -hmm. for see if we're being followed. Or difficulty of around. one, please. <laughs> In covert ops infiltration. In if you had street smarts, that would make for that would be better. But in this instance, I think infiltration would work. Okay. Cool. And there's three successes, so that is two momentum. I think that brings you up to four total now. I mean, flashbacks last week. <laughs> you are heading down a uh, what a you are heading down a street vendor shop or a street vendor street. Uh, people are haggling. Everyone is attempting to get the best deal over meat that appears to have been left on the hooks for about a week. Like an open air market? Or... Yes, precisely. Okay. All of a sudden, uh, Mr. Helsing, your keen eyes are picking up uh, four individuals, uh, four, uh, yeah. Four individuals who seem to have their sights set almost on you, or at least in your general direction. And within a few minutes as they approach, the crowds magically disperse. Uh, you realize that this is not is. Uh, you realize a little too late that this whole street was a hologram designed to lure in individuals. Uh, let's see. You've been crouching, tigered, hidden, dragoned. <laughs> Yes. You're not the oh, only one that can do this sort of thing. It all comes back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There is one of them, one of them, and where's the other one? There it is. There are three Orion males and one female. Uh, they are all wielding knives. Uh, the one in the back uh, has his uh, has a uh, is carrying a long uh, projectile rifle of some variety that looks particularly lethal. As they approach, the female starts speaking with a large grin on her face. You can always tell when the new f when newbies come along. This is our street. And we would like a toll if you wish to pass unharmed. She's uh, she ah she runs her uh, finger along a rather rather large serrated de uh, hunting knife. Of course, if you don't want to pay, we could extract our own currency. She looks up and down. And Dorian's sexual organs are are fetching a pretty high price these days. Van Helsing called action. <laughs> so are we going to are you going to enter combat or are you attempting to negotiate your way out of this? Well, I'm uh, letting. I, I'm going to do call to action so he can be prepared and gets that free bonus action to start uh, the round. So he can pull out his disruptor. <laughs> Greetings, ma'am. I think that uh, nice trick. I'm familiar with this technology. I think we can make a deal. That's exactly what I was hoping you would you would say. And there are five of you. I would think. Oh, I think about one hundred and fifty quidloons would cover your pa safe passage. Of course, if you want to come back the way you came, that'd be two hundred. How about fifty bars of gold press lassum? I wouldn't say no to Latinum. I'm sure that, you know, we can easily make a deal. I don't have this it on me. It's on our shuttle. In fact, we are merchants here ourselves looking to make some profit. 
She looks you all up and down. You don't strike me as the merchant type. Unless you're happy, unless you're selling stuff under the table. That's where the latinum is. And Van Helsing just rolled. Helsing just rolls his eyes when she said that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Does the human have a problem with this? No, no. Go right ahead. But you're not negotiating well. Just got to tell you that. Really? I have a... I was like, hush, slave. Yes. I can power at the XO. <laughs> Step one of negotiations is to ensure that the other party cannot leave until a suitable settlement is reached as three more individuals pop out from behind from behind one of the alleyways. Of course they do. Now, it's a shame that it's on your ship. I don't trust individuals who have to f go back to their ship. You'd be surprised how many just leave me all alone. Wanting more. You should never be left alone. No. And today it looks over here. He's like, really? <laughs> I probably need to make a control test that I don't giggle out loud at that. <laughs> so, her. I have a deal with a. I have a deal with a Tholian. I can easily cut you in on this. There's lots of profit to be made. Rule of Zach's position, 43. I'm sorry. Do I look like I'm a Ferengi? This is getting us nowhere. Either give us the money right sure. now. <laughs> Commander. <laughs> All right. And here we go into combat. All right. Uh, well. Worth a shot, right? Right? Right. Yep. That's a try. Uh, Okay, and I believe that it was Mr. Helsing who was going to go first. Don't forget you got free action there, bud. Roger. Well, unfortunately I have a disruptor and not a phaser. Yes, you do. And we will shoot her with the disruptor. Okay. Uh, daring security. Or, no, control security, please. Difficulty two. And with the free action, I will use aim. All right. And I'll use one of the momentum. Cool. And that's four successes, so you get two momentum. So you're at five. One, we get one back. Yep. All right, and disruptors are vicious one, three. Yep, three plus security. I still get my eight damage dice. Wow, that's uh okay. Which one are you? <laughs> And whose life are you going to make miserable today? He said her. Uh, the female. Okay. Uh, she screams in pain as she vaporizes. Rule number one in negotiation. Go for the head. <laughs> All right. Follow I up. will yell out. This is like... You can stay alive. If you go. Yeah, I don't think they're going to take too kindly to that. I wanted to give them an option. Yeah, I know. Give them an option. Best they can do is say yes. But they're not that smart. After all, yeah. they are only Orion males. <laughs> one with the knife, or one with the knife uh, charges at Mr. Helsing. 
This is going to be an opposed daring fitness test or daring security. And you need to meet or beat one success. Okay. And I'll use a momentum for a third die. All right. I also have a mean right hook and martial artist, too, when oh. it comes to that. Okay. Well, you've still met it. That's enough. Um, so you get to make... Uh, you get to take control of it. So uh, roll me a... Roll me one, on a, one unarmed strike, please. Uh, so just the damage. So that's six. All right. That's I'll three. Use one momentum to re-roll the zeros. Okay. So I think you're down to uh, three momentum, yep. So six total. All right, and... Unarmored attack has vicious quality. Oh, so eight damage total. Each, each damage effect, yeah. And it's lethal damage now too, isn't it? Sadly. Yep. Okay. Uh, he charges in. You. Uh, uh, he slashes the knife towards you, which you dodge with uh, the ease of someone who has literally trained for this his entire life. And you follow up with a right hook right into his uh, sternum. Now you hear the sound of cracking ribs as he goes down. There's no need for any more. Uh, who wants to go next? I will. Okay. I'll pull my disruptor and fire. Cool. Which one's you going for? Um, the ones that we were facing. One of okay. those two. No uh, matter which. Well, it does, actually, because one of them has a large uh, projectile rifle. The other one just has a sharp, sharp knife. Projectile rifle it is! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that is control security? Uh, yes, it is. That's only one success. That's not going to do the trick yeah. for you, I'm afraid. That's what happens when I have a security of one, too. <sighs> Something tells me you need to be joining uh, Thashran and Vaid in the uh, dis in the phaser training classes. We're going to need another holodeck. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Okay. Well, since you shot at him, he's going to attempt to shoot at you. Um <laughs> This guy is going to attempt to shoot Mr. Bashir. And also fail miserably. Uh, there's a loud crack followed by the uh, ping of something solid against the metal or against the steel wall about 10 feet behind you. As you see him struggling to uh, re roll or reload his uh, single shot weapon. Huh. He is. Uh, who's for, who's going from this side? Uh, I can yeah. go to one. Okay. I will uh, take out my trusty axe pick. Ah. Uh, so ice, ice pick. No, sorry. Okay. Say hey, if you, I'll start gyrating my hips, and if you, hey, if you want those up, uh, I'll I'll come and bring them to you. <laughs> and I'll run over and uh, try to stick them with the pointy end. Okay. Which guy are you sticking? Uh, I guess who's closest? I guess the guy behind, like back here. Sure, go for it. Uh, this is going to be an opposed daring security. Yep, and I have a focus on melee combat. That would do it. Ooh. Oh. Not so good. Well, uh, so good news is you do actually beat him. So roll me a. Uh, so roll challenge dice. Dice. Okay. So Anders in the pointy end went into yeah. you. <laughs> uh, I think blades have a damage of two and a security of four, so six, six. challenge dice. Yep. 
And it's vicious, vicious one. Ooh, so so seven damage. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. How do I want to do that for threat for the complication? So what I'm going to say is, uh, you stab your pick right in as if you were attempting to mine blood from his veins, and you draw a thick supply of it. Uh, however, as you you find yourself unable to um, take the pick out just due to how his body is falling to the ground. Uh, so your minor action, next action will, or your minor action will be to, nope, sorry. Uh, you currently do not have your melee weapon, and it will be a minor action to retrieve it uh, on your next turn. Okay, fair enough. All right, and that is him. He's technically alive. But not for long. He's out just... Er, he's out, but injured. Oh, let's see. There we go. Okay, who's next? Uh, that would be one of my guys. Probably this other guy with a knife, because he is... He is going to... Uh, he sees his buddy go down to Helsing... Uh, he sees both the Shran and Bashir looking competent or threatening. So he's going to go after one of the women. Uh, Miss Vaid, if I, you could please roll me a daring security roll, please. All right. Okay. Is this a two dice? Yep, two dice. Two Yep, and if you have hand-to-hand -hand or uh, fear of being hit as a focus, that would be good. Don't forget, <laughs> we have momentum. Yep. I think we should save the momentum. All right. That's two successes, so you do beat him. So if you have a melee weapon, feel free to uh, please roll me that damage, or if you have a... If you don't, feel free then just roll me um, number of challenge dice equal to one plus your security. So did you have a, a knife, something like that, a small sword? I can see her having a, a knife. Okay. Um, crap. I, I, I was paying attention to the one plus security for the challenge dice. What was the roll for the it is... um, weapon? Uh, two plus security, and it has a vicious one. Okay. Uh, you might need to talk to uh, talk me through this one. Okay. Uh, so you have your, you have yeah, a security. So I add the security with the two. Correct. And the vicious, do I add that onto it? Nope. So it's uh, an extra. Risk? Nope. So vicious will add da add damage if you roll an effect. So, don't yeah. just roll four challenge dice so there's four damage and because it has vicious one you that's a grand total of six okay okay uh so he takes uh, he takes six damage but i'm going to spend a threat and keep him up so he's fighting even though he has an injury as soon as i apply the right Um, because he has a complication, he's also knocked down. I'm not even going to fight that because of his bad, his complication. Uh, okay, I believe it is now either Miss Williams or Miss Vaid's turn. I guess Vaid will go. <laughs> sure. Uh, she'll go ahead and go after the guy that attacked her. <laughs> okay, with with her knife drawn. Or are you yep. going to shoot him? Knife drawn. All right. Daring security, please. All right. That's one success for you. And because of that critical... Or because of his failure, he will only roll one d20 to defend. 
he pretty much stabs himself at this point. You don't even <laughs> oh need to. Oh my walk. god! <laughs> and this is for trying to get me. Helsing looks approvingly at the, your improvement <laughs> in hand to hand. The sessions are working. Realizing that they are now outnumbered, uh, the other three immediately book it out of the alleyway and within and within seconds the holographic program of the open air market returns and you find yourselves in a bunch of oblivious orion men w women and children all trying to buy cheap knockoff products from of all your favorite uh, federation brands is there like a and there have to be multiple hollow projectors displaying that, or is it just something singular? Is there a control panel that we can do to destroy so no other travelers fall to the, fall prey to these highwaymen? That would be an insight engineering role, uh, difficulty two. Infiltration as a focus. Not in, this, not in this case. If you had covert technology, that would work better, I would think. If I'm the inventor of the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon Protocol? Oh, fine. Is that, is oh, that fine. Tearing, tearing engineering or control engineering? Um, that would be insight engineering. Insight? Yeah. Uh, difficulty two. Yeah, I was spending too much time trying to butter you up to my focus. I didn't hear the first part of it. <laughs> nope. Whatever, or whatever technology they're using to hide these uh, projectors, they've also deployed a sensor jammer f to prevent y inquisitive people such as yourself from finding out. I mean, you could spend all night here, but that would probably draw unwanted attention. Yeah, exactly. And we have a mission to finish. Uh, at least we know where it is and what to look out for in the future. Okay. Yeah, right. Can you keep a, like a scan or a, on your uh, tricorder beeping in case anything like this pops up in our in our past to give you a a little notice of something going on. Okay. Try for that. Do I have to make a roll to? No. Nope, not for this. The rest of your travel to the hotel uh, proceeds with as little incidents as possible. A couple homeless people attempting to accost you for money, but eh, and an occasional disgruntled security guard trying to drum up charges so you can bribe them. But once he realizes how little money you actually have, he gives up and moves along. You find yourself at the ho at the hotel. I'm just going to cut you back to... Uh, the hotel you're looking at is th this one. Um, multi-story glass... A multi-story structure uh, encased entirely in translucent glass that projects all sorts of images uh, for the entire metropolis to see. Uh, likewise, it is likely to assume that those inside can customize their own internal uh, view, their own internal scenery to be whatever they'd like. Naturally, much to your chagrin, or you know, rolling your eyes just in case, you do notice two things about it. One is that it's impermeable to sensors from the outside. And two, uh, similarly, there is similar transporter. Or the same technology that is used to prevent transporters from working in and out of... Ah, on, ah, from orbit to the surface and back again would also prevent transporters from working into or out of this building. Uh, by the way, this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. As you enter, the, uh, as you enter the lobby, you are astounded by the opulence. 
uh, chandeliers that you swear are actually uh, precious stones uh, set among uh, latinum filigrees. Car ah, red carpet so cush you could swear or so uh, padded you swear that it was probably laid this morning and upon entering you are immediately accosted by three bellhops each of them trying to out trying to out compete each other for the uh, privilege of carrying your bags naturally they are very interested in tips Thank you, thank you. Um, we're going to have a few drinks first before we check in. Our luggage will be, at, will be here delivered later. Uh, where is the uh, hotel? Uh, I'm trying to think of a fancy word for bar, but I can't think of one. <laughs> lounge. Bar, lounge, there you go, lounge. They... Once they realize that they're not going to get money from you, they immediately turn to their attention to the next guests coming in. It's very quick to see that you are well under or well underdressed for this particular hotel. Whatever the alien equivalent of three-piece suits seems to be uh, the fashion choice du jour. Everyone here seems to be extremely well off, or at least pretending to be. Uh, even the mistresses of the night uh, dress much more chic than the ones you have seen on the street. It's not hard to find the bar. It is, after all, it is on ground level, and it is set over. It is set overlooking an ocean vista. Whether or, as you have actually walked up to those hotel and seen no ocean in its immediacy, you're pretty sure that's one of the holographic sceneries. Once again, we find ourselves in the bar. However, this is a much better bar than the one that you were just in. Uh, where the previous bar had an eerie or had an aura of dreariness and drunkenness to it, this one's more of a lively cl uh, club. Uh, high te or high tempo techno bass uh, reverberates through it. Uh, your antennas quiver in time to the beat, whether you like it or not. And uh, even uh, v v even your eyes uh, can't help but wince every time the beat gets dropped. Around the bar, uh, let's see. Dancing girls, dancing guys, dancing everyone, really. Uh, however, you were told to look at the bar, so this is where you look at. Uh, there are three bartenders. Uh, there is a Vulcan female who is dressed up far more scantily than any Vulcan female you've ever seen before, except from maybe those particular holodeck novels that someone might like, not, not judging here. And you can tell that all these teachings from Sirach to uh, control her emotions have gone right out the window with her. She's smiling, she's laughing. I don't think any of you are empaths. Uh, yeah, she's having a grand old time and making sure everyone around her has a grand old time too. There is an Orion bartender, a female also, in working the far side of the bar. Uh, she seems to be serving up wine and other refined drinks to and caters to uh, gentlemen. And she is not above flaunting her assets in order to get the best tip. Oddly enough, the one who is drawing the biggest crowd around him is a human male. And it's not for his lack of... It's not for his dress, for he's dressed quite finely. It's not for his attractiveness, because he is probably in his 50s. Uh, his hair is unkempt. Uh, it is because he is mixing two, two drinks while simultaneously juggling two bottles. And putting on a right show of it. All right, we'll take a little corner booth, 
so we can keep an eye on the bar mm -hmm. or I'll, I'll do the Helsing way. We'll backs to the wall and in the corner so we can survey the whole area. Okay. Uh, insight plus security, please. Difficulty of... Oh, sorry, babe. <laughs> sorry. Helsing. She's like, I didn't know humans are so agile. I'll save my friends. Seeing how the roll goes. Okay. Yeah, um, Mr. Helsing, you can assist if you'd like. <laughs> or someone else could if they want. I'm really not picky on who does the looking at this stage. And for the assist, it would be... A similar, Insight Security. Insight Security. Well, that's one success from Bashir. And one success from Helsing. So you get one momentum. Not bad, sir. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Bashir, your eyes... Uh, ah. Now uh, your eyes cross or crisscross the bar scene, lingering maybe a little too long on some of the more individuals that you find attractive, but I don't judge. And you're going through your men you're going through your mental checklist. How the heck are you going to find a potential friend to the Federation in here? And then you notice the name tag on the male bartender's uniform. It says Soong. S O O N G. And that now that you think about it, you're with your history in science. That looks sort of like data, but that's impossible. Data died, right? Uh. Okay. Oh, so uh, the bartender only has two arms. Yes, he only has two arms. He's just very good okay, at. Had, okay. No, no, he's very good at uh. He's just very... He's got his timing down to the nanosecond. Okay. I'm on yeah, I was way. confused, too. I, I thought it had four arms, too, at first. I, I was. Um, and that's why I'm just like, uh, that's, okay. I'm pretty but, sure I said human. But, yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, you said human, but then it still Hot seemed words. like... That's why Vaid was impressed. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. I was like, oh, wow. Vaid's every right to be impressed. Okay, um, we didn't have any sort of code or anything else, um, no, you all didn't. right, I'll mo mosey up to the bar, uh, you gonna bring back anything to drink, sir? I'll take some of the, the money and go up. <laughs> I'll have a Sumerian sunset, sir, and a clean glass, if possible. Any <laughs> other requests? <laughs> I mean, while we're here, I mean, might as well. Check off vodka. Check off brand vodka. <laughs> you know, in Russian, it was originally what? made from. <sighs> Okay, so I'll take some cash and I'll head up to the bar. All right. Uh, Fisher will ask for the most exotic drink that they have that he will still um, survive that has drinking. has an umbrella. Yeah. It has to have an umbrella. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Okay. The As you approach the bartender, he continues to wow and impress everyone around him, uh, switching out bottles. Uh, his most impressive trick appears to be able to use a half-full bottle, uh, fling it up, and use uh, centrifugal force to keep it, uh, keep it spinning while completely open, uh, so that none of the liquid actually falls out. It lands. Uh, he catches it by, the, by its neck facing down. He pours, uh, flicks, the glass with a, uh, flicks the glass across the bar with a small uh, flick of the wrist, and, and is immediately serving the next guest. As uh, he uh, he uh, finishes pouring a scotch on the rocks for a rather disgruntled Tellarite, although it's difficult to tell, most Tellarites are disgruntled by nature, 
and as he pours his uh, th as he continues to pour a uh, some sort of blue wine for one of the Vulc for a yeah for a Vulcan businessman, uh, he says to you, "All right, blue boy, you're next. What'll it be? Be quick about it." Um, I'll list off all everyone's drinks, specializing the umbrella, and uh, uh, I'll also ask him, uh, how about something, oh, for myself, I'll take, I don't know, what do you suggest? Well, the Orion brandy is pretty good this year. They had a good crop. However, that might be a little too warm for your cold blood. So I would recommend a. Ooh, I would be I would be thinking now that it's heh, not illegal in the Federation anymore. Rom Romulan ale with a slight, with a pint of cool. Uh, should drop its temperature down to something that you even you would find refreshing. As he sounds good. You realize that even as you've maintained eye contact with him and he was able to rattle that off, he's already. Pre prepared the Chekhov's vodka and the Sumerian sunrise. You got the hands of a master. How long have you been doing this? Yeah, about 30 years. Nope, sorry, GM's wrong on the math. About 15 years. Do they hire a lot of androids? I uh, roll me a Roll me insight plus command, please. I use like xenobiology, cybernetics, anything like cybernetics that. would work. Okay. He smiles. Uh, he smiles as he passes you uh, the uh, chilled Romulan ale. Wouldn't know about that. Uh, if I was if I was an android, I'm pretty sure I could do a lot better than being here. Um. Uh, sorry, you cut out there. I. Just... So where are you from? <laughs> Sorry, it's the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craven 2. Small colony that sprouted up thanks to the Borg refugees. Or thanks to the refugees from the Borg invasion. God had was a scientist at one point. Found that mixing beer was far more preferable, preferable to mixing chemicals. It's pretty much the same thing, really, except in this case you actually get thanked and not called all sorts of heretical names. File ID 555-348-78342. Uh, sorry, once again, you cut out. What were you asking? Oh, oh I just was rattling off um, a set of numbers. Just like... Five five three eight four eight seven eight three four two. It's actually Data's um, Starfleet code. <laughs> oh, if it is his serial number, cool. His eyes, his eyes narrow almost in barely perceptively. I think you're. Hmm. Tell you what, blue boy, endure those drinks on the house. My shift ends in an hour. You can find me in room three hundred three. If you happen to know any more of those numbers. Excellent. I will uh, talk to you later. Great job. And this drink is amazing. Nothing but the best. All right, I'll head back. And I had this big pink tall glass with like sparkles in it and it's got an umbrella and pineapples and everything. I'll hand it over to the Shrand and the Sumerian sunset and uh, uh, have the girls their drinks and uh, then uh, I'll sit down with a the check off in front of uh, Helsing and 
whisper over to him is like, we have a meeting in an hour, room 303. And Helson grabs the vodka, one shots it real quick, <laughs> holds it. Roll me fitness plus out medicine, the... please. Difficulty one. Um, power systems as a focus? No. Uh, no. Power <laughs> systems. <laughs> if you had alcoholism or sommelier as focuses, I might allow, I might, you know. <laughs> power systems. Yeah, you pass I it. Think you get it. I think you get advantage on that roll anyway, just for that line. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> uh, I went out the... uh, All right, sir. Uh, all of your drinks are made to perfection. You don't actually expect them to be any less so, of course, given who at least some of you suspect might be making them. But overall, the hubbub does not seem to die down as you uh, sit around and watch. People come, people go, lots of people on the dance floor. Um, a couple under the table deals seem to be going on. A couple of, of over the deal table, over the deal, over the table deals too. But that's Orion Society for you. And under the table deals. <laughs> oh yes, many of those too. Well, we will hold out and enjoy our beverages, um, considering it's uh, what I got. I will be sipping that baby without much. Uh... Uh. Do you want any of that fruit there? I think that was, Sorry, was that to me. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you're the yeah. only one who asked for yeah. oh, yeah. like, are you inter- are you interested in trying some of the fruit? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to give all of it. If you want to try a piece, sure. May, may I? Thank or, you. Go ahead. Cu- culture like this is meant to be shared. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if I've ever had one of these before. It, uh, we'll it yeah. We'll order some appetizers, uh, sushi, and. <laughs> <laughs> It, it tastes like drumming. That could just be the beat. <laughs> oh, the... Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what it is. The secret is beet juice. That's what it's for drums. <laughs> I heard it tasted like a... Like um, a smatter. Oh, my what, gosh. What's the matter to you? Yeah, exactly. What's the matter? Nothing much. Oh, I love you all. Uh, uh, shortly after you have uh, finished your first drinks, an Orion woman, uh, well dressed but definitely in revealing clothing, that seems to be the trend these days, wanders over and immediately suggests that you order some more. Uh, she is attempting, or she is not so subtly in tempt. Ah, she is not so subtly attempting uh, to waft her pheromones over you. But thankfully, you have all taken your uh, 12-hour dose of immune immune, eh, immune immune injections, which I believe have about another 10 hours or so on them. I will, uh, just to keep our table, and, you know, um, I will order, like, some sort of snazzy appetizers or something so we're not just hogging up a, a table up for her, you know, so I, we can slip her a tip of some kind. Oh, so easy a pun, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but you can tell I'm the one. I, I work in food service, so you know mm-hmm. holding up a table. <laughs> <laughs> now she strongly recommends the Mockler wings. Yeah, quick look Sorry. over the menu. Uh, you realize that the Mokler wings are also the most expensive thing on the menu. Or on the appetizer's did. menu. I'll take an order of the tart tips for all of us this year. 
That was going to be my second option. Now, how would you like them uh, base? How would you like them basted? Uh, medium rare uh, with a. Uh, is everyone go cool spicy or? Good by me. All right, spicy it is. Yeah, spicy it is, darling. See you soon. And she wanders away while shaking her caboose. It's not long before the targ tips show up. They are tender <laughs> and juicy, just as advertised. Nice. And the hour goes by. And you are... You will head to room... Th and, ah, the hour goes by. You keep an eye... As you see uh, Mr. Soong uh, suddenly leave his uh, table. Or suddenly leave his... Suddenly leave his post... And a uh, bald Orion, or bald male Orion, uh, who looks like he pretty pretty similar build to Drax the Destroyer, nice. without the uh, puns, <laughs> uh, walks up, and a significant amount of the crowd disperses. It's obvious that part of the reason that they chose the Soong for the bartender was, well, his... What? Yes, his uh, showmanship, let's say that. Uh, let's see. You head to room 303, and you knock on the door. Oh, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do you go to room 303? Do you go elsewhere? Yes! 303. Okay. And I will knock on the door. I'll do shave and a haircut. <laughs> Before we uh, knock on the door, though, mm -hmm. I'd like to pull out my uh, my medical tricorder that I'm sure is gussied up to look like something else right now. Yeah, but, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to make sure that there's no other alternative life science presence before we uh, go meet with uh Or what our, kind of life science are present. Exactly, what kind of life science are present that All right. as well. Uh, that would be insight plus uh, insight plus medicine, please. Difficulty of one. Uh, you're not able to detect anything beyond the door's passage or the door frame. It appears that they are that whoever is in 303 takes their security very seriously. Well, I'm not reading it. Inside. Okay. Right, now I'll shave and haircut. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody's out of the way of the door. Mm -hmm. The door opens with a ah, with with nary a sound as it enter as you enter a well a well furnished a room filled with cybernetic gear, uh, an eclectic mix of l library, computer equipment, surveillance gear, biotechnology. You can see, um, ah, you see, Mr. Soong is lo lounging back on one of his sofas with his feet up, still in his bartender outfit, and he is, and he has a glass raised with a attractive, even by Orion female standards. Uh, she is also dressed in a business or business attire, and not as scantily clad as those who work on, who have worked out on the front lines. His eyes. His uh, jovial nature, his jovial expression, quickly sours. Uh, he motions you all to come in, and with a Jedi-like wave of his hand, the door closes behind you. There are not many people who know Data's serial number. My name is Bashir. I'm with Starfleet Intelligence. Of course, not only, of course, Starfleet Intelligence would know I'm alive. Well, I mean, let's face it, Picard knew. Well, many of my old friends did. Anyways, gentlemen, I'm assuming you're here for my help for one reason or another. Out with it. We'll see if it's 
We'll see if it's worth my time. We are looking for a Tholian. Uh, obviously, I'm assuming you're aware of the war. He raises an eye. I'm not... I don't take... I have heard rumors that there are some things going on outside of Federation space, but it is really not my concern. I have my own empire to run, and I do so quite well from... I do so quite well without having to dabble in those affairs of state. Well, it seems like those affairs of state are actually closer than you think. And it may impact your business. Okay. I am. There's not many Tholians around. The only one who in this particular building is Falks. I assume you want him for whatever reason Starfleet Intelligence wants him. I mean, I could probably name five off the top of my head. Ten if I decide to con actually consult uh, today's security. Ah, today's uh, secure. Ah, blah, blah, blah. If I could, if I took the time to access today's security briefings. Any information you could give us would be extremely helpful. And if you prefer monetary compensation, I'm sure there's something that we can arrange. Hmm. Or if there's anything we can help you with. Hmm. His He begins to think. I think, tell you what... My daughter is currently doing a tour of the um, of the uh, of the Pleiades sector. She's very talented if you haven't heard her. But for whatever reason there appears to have been some sort of trade embargo placed on of one of the cultures out there. They seem to have come up with some tiff in guarding them regarding themselves and the federation. If your Starfleet intelligence could somehow smooth things over so that she could perform on time, otherwise we would have to uh, reimburse her, uh, uh, re reimburse not only the concert venue but her fans roughly, well, precisely, uh, seven million three hundred and twelve uh, strips of latinum. That is. Not a fee I wish to have to pay. I'm sure we have uh, access to uh, some uh, pull. Um, so, yes, I mean, my ship is uh, still out a little ways away. I can't quite make contact, but I can definitely see what I can do. That shouldn't oh. be too hard. Oh, please. And he gestures at one of his... Uh, 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 it appears to be horrendously outdated uh, technology. Please, use my console. It, traver it traverses a poorly, mo poorly monitored band, probably because uh, one of my shell corporations was the one who set up the Orion's communication blocking systems. Okay. Uh, Is it capable of burst transmission? Of course. Just being as old as it looked, I just wanted to make sure. He smiles greatly. I will pull the uh, um, my nurse over there and uh, basically still have her run a scan because I'm still trying to kind of in my head figure out if this is the doctor himself or this is one of the androids. Uh, this and, is a uh, particular point in beta canon um, which tell you what this we'll... is that th three part trilogy wasn't yes, it? Yes it was. Or... Okay. I favorites? thought that was where we were at but. One of my favorites <laughs> actually but uh, if yeah. you want to roll me 
Insight Plus Command or Insight Security. Uh, difficulty of one. Can I assist? Uh, not no, because I've heard. Yeah, he's just—he's trying to, you know, learn something, dredge something up from his memory. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and use cybernetics just okay. for my own sake. Well, insight command. One okay. So uh, while uh, Mr. Or C Commander Data's death uh, during the whole Shinzon incident was well recorded, uh, he received a hero's funeral, <clears throat> and Picard gave a tear jerk uh, or tear jerker of a eulogy. Naturally, um, he was f he had attempted to trans. Ah, he had attempted to save most of his engrams in uh, Soong's earlier work, known as B4. But sadly, B4 was not capable or advanced enough to process it all properly. Uh, right now, I believe B4 is still serving with Mr. Maddox in some form or another. Uh, this one, however... Uh, however, um, what ac this Soong is... Uh, goes back to Nuni and Soong's quote-unquote death at the hands of Lore. Uh, you, this part is definitely classified at this point. Uh, Soong transferred his memory engrams into a android body, which was held in stasis, uh, per hoping one day to, quote, get it right. But you know, he never had time, so he transposed himself into it. And over the last 30, 40 years... Uh, built up a wonderful uh, crisscross of shell corporations and uh, independent enterprises that allowed him to travel and figure things out on his own. He learned he learned of Data's death, and through a series of Engram trance, and eventually he stole as he stole a bunch, or he stole B4 and a s several other. Um, soon type androids in a grand heist which is pretty cool reading if you want to go do it and eventually long story short uh, mer merged or over merged data's engrams over top of his own uh, more or less killing himself and uploading data's data's consciousness into his advanced uh, soon soon body so you're looking at a combination of what would have basically this is data if he had been raised with Soong's memories it's a weird mishmash of the two so i mean the daughter that he's referring to is la lol yep yep uh yeah all right as i'm uh, as i'm going to the computer um i'm gonna start humming blue skies <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what is, uh, so what is Miss Williams scanning? I was going to get uh, data from the two of them. Um, that was what I was kind of basically with the medical uh, tricorder. Okay. To like, subtly to like, just to make sure of my hypothesis. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you have enough momentum now, so I'm not even going to bother having you roll. Okay. So, uh, Miss Williams, if it was anything less... Uh, less uh, detailed than a Starfleet tricorder. Uh, Mr. Soong w would read as human, but you are definitely detecting that there is an android underneath all of the false life signs that he is projecting. Uh, the Orion woman, who has thus far been silent, is 100% Orion. Two. Okay. Um, I will use the secure uh, computer and send a burst transmission to the Nighthawk, um, basically requesting um, to the captain uh, to look into the trade embargo. And is she going by a different name or uh, as the singer? Or mm, Yes, her name, her, her uh, nom, de, nom de plume is Elena Proxima. Okay. Um, 
I basically, yeah, I'll like, I'll send in a burst transmission to clear up the trade embargo and to somehow ask her, ask him to clear her for the scheduled concerts and uh, to see if Chalmers can pull some strings um, and deliver some flowers um, for the first show. <laughs> The Nighthawk will uh, go ahead and ping you back. Message received. We'll see what we can do. Give me a uh, once you uh, give me a proper ETA in another twelve hours, or another update in another twelve hours. Sure. Data or uh, soon. Uh, sure. Upon hearing the. Uh... Uh, transmission from the Nighthawk. Soon just shrugs his shoulders and puts his hands, uh, raises his hands up and outward, sort of like a shrug, and grins. That's all that a father could ask for. Exploiting a, exploiting a power, uh, military powers, il, advanced info, or advanced intelligence and infiltration network, to to the benefit of his own daughter. Now, he says, leaning forward, you want Falks. And since we're, yeah. go, since we're going to go into heist mode, I suggest that we take a break. And we come back in about 15 minutes. So about 10 past the hour. And I will see you guys then. And we are back. Hmm. Welcome back to Noonien's lab. And his uh, he introduces her as his wife, Dalrisi. And says that she is the shrewdest businesswoman he's ever met. And he's lived at least two lifetimes. She smiles, nods. Doesn't say a heck of a lot. But understands that this really isn't a discussion that she can really co contribute in. Uh, he steeples his fingers, brushes a bunch of cybernetics, security, biomedical, and music journals off of a glass table, and sets up a data pad. So you want Falks, eh? Well, rest, I will tell you the hurdles you'll have to pass to get him, but rest assured, I'm not helping you. If anything goes back to... I'm not risking anything tracing its way back to me. You understand? Understand. Good. So, Falks is at the... Uh, Falks's residence and place of business is the penthouse suite. It has its own little uh, gyro pad, so he can just take off and land right from there without having to walk through our huddled ma our huddled masses it also helps that it's uh, that he that it is entirely climate controlled to be that of to be that of a tholian environment rather than a class m i hope you brought your enviro suits he looks you up and down uh, of course you didn't did no oh, well not my problem that's your problem, not mine. To break in, you'll if you wish to break in, you'll have uh, at least three layers of security. The first is, of course, on the elevator. 
Second will be any uh, sense, any uh, sensory wep, any sensor dampening technology, weapons dampening technology, that sort of stuff. If you wish things to get ugly, the third, of course, will be his home defense suite. Never seen it myself. The schematics I've I had, I've read about, indicate that it's pretty potent. Not gonna lie. You look. Be prepared for a firefight against the building. <laughs> ha! Uh, he laughs, realizes no, one, no one's laughing with him. <clears throat> right. Do you, do you know if those, if the home defense network and the sensor and weapon dampening field are on the same circuit? Are they separated? Oh, every air gap. Everything's air gapped from the building from the building suites for certain you might be able to find a wiring diagram and get a find some connection but i've i've been a i've been in this room and this hotel for the last 10 years well i've never gone looking for anything like that i've certainly haven't found anything like it you'll probably have to do some hacking on site and his well falx himself isn't much of a fighter his uh, bodyguard certainly is, and he taps his uh, he taps an invisible button on his table, and this charming gentleman pops up. His name's Jack. Uh, bio <coughs> enhanced Orion male, quite the charmer apparently to the ladies, but he's a beast. You might say he's a bit of a Hulk. And he spikes the camera. I don't get it. Yeah. Intel yeah. Well, not the most intelligent individual. He when it comes to secure when it comes to security, he is top of his game. Being that the room is kept at the environmental conditions for a tholian. Oh yes, is... an environmental suit almost all day long. If you want, to, okay. if you want to catch him, he tends to um, be released or let out uh, two or three times a day to in, indulge in his own personal uh, recreation. And there's a period of time where he's not with Fox. Correct. But he never leaves Fox unguarded. He'll always leave a cadre of other guards just in case. What kind of security is on the helipad? The uh, helipad has uh, four standard disruptor turrets uh, trained with IFF chips. Naturally, his shuttles are the only ones that are uh, that are allowed to pass un pass without any problems whatsoever. He, a data sort of smirks. There was this one time when a cartel flyer got too close that wasn't on IFF and got shot down. Oh man, that took weeks to fix that. Oh, anyways, and if yeah, so that's. You know, if you have, if you're heading up, there's of course the security tunnels. They of course have guards, checkpoints, and only secure, only uh, Orions are allowed up. Of course, if you have an in with the Orion Syndicate, that does get you through a few things. But I'm, he gives a quick look. I'm guessing only. I'm guessing none of you actually have that, do you? No. No. Well. Of course not. Also, they have weapons scanners on every floor, every sub subsection access point. And that's pretty much it. Questions, comments, concerns? Lots of concerns. Good luck. Commander Helsing, anything? Well, there's a window where the the beast is not in the room. That'd probably be our best opportunity 
to go in, but the Enviro suits are going to be the, my main concern. That we could possibly exfil if he has a helicopter on the pad. We'd already have the IFF chip and everything in there, and we could beat feet without the turrets triggering off if, while we're in there, Vade can knock out the home defense suite and anything on that to make sure those things don't come back online. That's just quick off the top of my head. I trust the, uh, the Shran to get us through the uh, some of the security measures, but honestly, none of us are going to look Orion. <laughs> Instead of actually trying to find a way to get in, wouldn't it be, at least with the difficulties presented to me, is there a way that we could actually try to encourage to get Falk out? What timeline did we have on this mission, sir? I don't believe it was not given. Yeah, there really wasn't. We got time. We just need to get him. I mean, if there was, what kind if of possible? Go on. Um, if it's possible, and we do have enough time to actually go ahead and plan our heist of Falk, if you will, I mean probably the best way if we can't as soon as we continue to survey his his penthouse but if we can't if we ha manage to actually catch him in transit probably preferable and to make sure he leaves at a time that we want him to leave and go to a location we want him to go does he have any properties or anything outside any other business interests he would leave his domicile, domicile? Fox is pretty paranoid when it comes to his own safety. He's also a type A personality and it ensures that every every detail be just so. Data soon taps his head. I feel fair. I can relate to that on some level. Regardless, his criminal, his uh, completely legitimate business connections does have him flying to and from at least a couple times a week. He doesn't advertise when he comes and goes, of course. Usually, when he leaves, it's... Usually, I tend to... I only notice when he leaves when uh, Jack doesn't show up at my bar that day. Security does the hotel... Uh, sorry, two questions asked at once. What was that? Um, I'll let you go ahead for a second. What kind of security does the hotel itself have? Oh, standard rent a mercenary unit. My understanding is there's only about 10 or 15 of them. All of them, of course, have are armed to the teeth, but well, the hotel doesn't pay or doesn't go with the highest bidder, so their gear is not is a substandard compared to proper syndicate um, guard. What would one gig. say if... Would the, is there evacuation procedures for the hotel in case of a fire, per se? Usually. Most folks would exit through the lower hangar or through the lower lobby and these fire exits indicated here. Falks, on the other hand, most likely would just jump in his flight, jump in his gyro, and bugger off. Do you know how far the transporter shield in this uh, around the hotel goes? Uh, yes, it's actually it's actually generated within the structure itself. Uh, multiple overlapping fields will like. Or extend roughly one meter beyond the wall. The Shran, can you possibly jerry rig something that would convince the entire building that there was a major fire starting in the kitchens, in the dining area, that would cause a severe evacuation of this entire facility? If we can contact the captain, 
We could have his entire... As soon as Falks leaves in his transport to possibly beam the entire transport to the shuttle bay. Major Distraction is my third and fourth middle names. I thought so. Right before dances awesomely. <laughs> or right after. Hey. Commander, what do you think? I'm liking it. Now, Thuxon, you mentioned Jack showing up at the bar. That's when Fox was gone, when he... Oh, no. Fox, he comes down to the bar when he is let out for recreation. Gotcha. He always goes with Falk whenever Falk decides to uh, bugger off for whatever reason. Okay. So, if we wanted to have a fire, the best time to do it is when Jack was at your bar. I'm not advocating anything either way. That way, it keeps Jack from going with Falk. Soon shrugs. It's a little bit easier. Dr. Williams, can you come up with a... I should ask you, Dr. Sung, before I say this, would it be possible... I know you don't want to be involved, but can you help us with slipping him a drink? He raises his hands and goes, Oh no, I am... I am not of I am not part of Starfleet. I do not fall under Starfleet rules, regulations, orders, etc. Hell, I didn't even know I was going to be activated until today. And he sort of smirks at he smirks at himself as he realizes the robotic pun. <laughs> if we wouldn't have to do anything to to Jack as long if he was here, he's away from the building. The fire goes off. You know, if it's as he bad as we can up. make it sound. Exactly. He would have... As I say, he'll head up, but... Falk and should I... evac fire. True. And if we could get a trans... Somehow get up and get a trans... Like, put one of our communicators or something up to the helipad and possibly mark his escape vehicle... And the captain can transport it to a shuttle bay after he leaves. As soon as they get the signal, then we don't have to bake, go through security as much as possible. Now, getting up to the roof to mark the helica, the transport. We could mark up. it with a, a laser target designator. Do you have that on you, sir? We could. Pretty sure we could come up with wire something. something. Possibly. Or if we're the strand in, might be able weather. to create something. Yeah. Or the Nighthawk, if it's not too far away, if we're going to have it transport the ship out, it could transport a designator down to us. Uh, I try not to interfere too much with the ship because we don't want to be no noticed. <laughs> the anti-transporter shield is only around that hotel, correct? Correct. And the continent, so we could just be. Yes. Oh, and the continent. So, okay. So, would we be able to, if that transport shield is around the continent as well as the building, when it flies away, it's still going to be inside the shield, right? It would, but it would also said that we could possibly, with our advanced transporter system, it's going to be dangerous, but we could still beam him aboard. How far away was that? Uh, that alley that we got jumped from. Uh, the Fox holographic Project. alley. Yeah, I'd say about an probably a half hour walk. Set it up to show holographic flames around the building. 
Well, that's not quite what I was thinking. I mean, holodeck systems and transporter systems, at least. I'm no engineer, but I've been told with my um, engineering extension courses that, I mean, from what I could tell, that they're at least semi-similar in some of the systems that they use. If we could actually just, if we could learn Falk's flight plan, and if he actually is able to fly over this alley at the same time, we could probably just go ahead and jury rig the systems there if we scared away the local riffraff. The help, the help the Nighthawk actually assist in transport. I mean, what's the point of actually just using that to scare away with their with their silly power tricks and scaring away newcomers if we could actually use it for a decent use? Okay, yeah. so what do we need? Shran, do we need to get the Shran down to maintenance or at least something similar in the hotel to start fire? We need to distract the bodyguard. And we need to find some way to track his movements. Well, the best way to track his movements is probably just to continue tracking the big Orion security person. Because wherever Fox will be, he's not going to be too far behind. True. Tracking the security detail is probably easier than tracking the Tholian himself. Okay. He'll be very no noticeable. Mm -hmm. Even if Jack did get transported with Fox, security yeah, would be there. Sure. We can yeah. let them know. Yeah, we can <laughs> let them know that the beast is up there with them too. The Hulk? You called yeah, what was that? The Hulk? Yes, the Hulk. Please don't sue us, Disney. Uh, Does he have any distinguishing dress clothes that he wears? I have he's a not wearing he's the... going to... I think he's going to be fairly noticeable. I don't think we need to worry about his clothes. I mean, if you wore like purple pants or something like that, it would be easier to pick him out. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. The Jack's no, is, I don't think Jack's I, I, especially I don't think, tailored. Commander, I don't think you'll like him when he's angry. He won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> okay. In any case, Dr. Lieutenant, Sam, it's going to take us. In any case, Doctor Sand, it's going to take us an extended period of time to actually plan this. Can we? Can we bug you for your hospitality one more time and actually see if you can get us a room within this hotel itself? Oh, of course. I can certainly... One of my companies can certainly provide the... Or one of my companies can certainly provide the funds necessary to rent one of our more ostentatious suites. Just like that, much can we Here you can are. yeah as i say can we also yeah if you can borrow some funds so we can get some supplies of course federation will pay you back any expenses at double hmm. of course and he slides a con uh, he uh, slides a contract over to you it is one dealing with a a, a chemical uh, a chemical manufacturer who is... Yes. I was thinking. I was wondering if it was going to come to this. He slides the contract over to you. It is that of a chemical manufacturer known as a Sheeran Corps. Eh, on the surface, everything... It appears that they buy and sell industrial chemicals. It's my understanding that the shipyards over Delta IV require a new vendor... 
Here's a contract. I will scan the contract. <laughs> it's basically a... Uh, Sheeran Core is looking to provide goods and services at a slightly marked up rate. Uh, I've been trying to break into this, uh, to the Delta 4 market for some time. They're very, um, ah, what's the phrase? Nepotistic. They prefer other Deltans. I'm not going to lie. It's very common for Deltans to, with their, uh, highly social structure to prefer that of other Deltans. I believe, however, I can provide a substance that they cannot for only slight, only a, with, ah, I believe that the substances that Shear and Core can provide are of better quality for only a slightly better, par, for only a slightly more expensive uh, price, but the benefits are well worth it. All right. I'll Sp sign the contract. Splendid. Welcome to uh, Sheeran Court, ladies and gentlemen. And as a GM who is currently looking at his notes, whereabouts you are in the plot, I think let's do heist prep and heist execution next week, just because I don't want to go till 10 o'clock. My time. Yeah. Which I, I, I was going to say, I don't want to go to yeah. <laughs> pass fair. Yeah, so. so let's call it here. Um, I've already made notes about whereabouts we are in the heist and what you guys are currently planning, but you now have a week to figure things out. So uh, this will be a scene change, so please just drop one momentum now so we don't have to do so at the start of next week. And so for the uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for playing. And we will be back next week for the thrilling conclusion of Get the Falks Out of Here. Goodbye. Ah.